So mm -hmm. thank you all for joining me. Um, should, should we? No, you. I'm waiting now. <laughs> We'll start in a tiny bit. I'm also going to start us on YouTube. So you might get a message saying recording on YouTube or something like that. Let's see. I have. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, then I have to turn uh, off two. the volume. Australia. Um, yeah. Great. Okay, I've closed that YouTube tab. I hope it's still going. I think it is. Um, okay, so Jed, I'll start. I'll just tell people about Saw. And okay. um, uh, I think that's really it. Um, and then I'll just chat to all my old friends <laughs> in the chat <laughs> bar and I'll shut, shut my face off. Um, so Hi to everybody who's um, just coming in. Hi to everybody who um, has been here for a couple minutes. Um, I'll give you a quick introduction to who we are if you haven't been here or a quick reminder. I'm gonna share my sc screen real quick. Um, I'm really grateful to all, all the artists who have helped us do this, including Jet, who's been here before or was with the, the Believer before. Um, so, these are the Friday night workshops. And yeah, we took them over from the Believer when they um, stopped having the resources to do it, basically. And I'm really grateful that they would because it, it just fit in perfectly with, with what we do here. And what we do is we're a school. We're a nonprofit school for comics. Um, I'm going to close the sidebar. There we go. Um, and you can find out more about our courses and what we do at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, we're called, SAW stands for Sequential Artists Workshop. We're based in Gainesville, Florida, although now we're spread out. Um, coming soon, Jen, next week, Ellen O'Grady is gonna be here on the Friday night. Um, Leela Corman's doing some classes starting in March. Um, she had a January and February class, but they sold out really quickly. So you might wanna jump on there soon if you want. And we just started something called Storytelling Vinyasa, which just started a couple of days ago. So not too late to jump on. Um, and I'll mention that we're supported um, by donations a lot. I'll get to that in a minute, I guess. <laughs> um, share what you do tonight on social media. Friday Night Comics is the hashtag we tend to use. Uh, you can tag us at Comics Workshop. I hope Jet will tell us um, a hashtag and or um, at symbol. What do you call that username? I don't know if, um, if they have one. Join us for free anytime sharing at our member site, which is free, and it's just one click to join members.sawcomics.org, and you don't even need to join. You can just sort of browse around, and you'll see um, lots of stuff going on there, including lots of other events. Um, that's at members.sawcomics.org. I'll put all this in the chat, too. And um, yeah, you can support us with donations or support us on Patreon at uh, Saw Comics, um, PayPal, Venmo, all that stuff. Um, and you can go to members.sawcomics.org to learn more, learn.sawcomics.org. And please, no, nothing inappropriate, please just come on. <laughs> Thanks. And, um, and enjoy. And I'm really grateful that you're all here. I'm grateful that Jet is here. I'm going to stop sharing. And um, how this will work is um, Jet will do whatever, uh, whatever they want and guide you through some work. And um, when it's time to share, maybe 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes in, something like that, um, we'd like you to raise your hand on Zoom. It's, it's in, under reactions usually. There's a little place to raise your hand. If you're coming from, we've just discovered that if you're coming from Eventbrite and you're inside their platform, they actually don't have a hand raised function. So you can put it in the chat, like raising my hand, I wanna share. And, um, and I'll sort of um, spotlight you all and let you, um, let you come up front in order that you arrive. Um, I'm gonna spotlight, does everyone see Jet now? Front and center. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off my video. I'm gonna put a couple things in the chat window. Jet, thanks so much for being here. Say, um, tell us anything you want. Yes, um, thank you so much for um, inviting me here. Thanks to the, for all of you for coming. I'm super excited to be here. 
Um, I'm just going to talk through kind of what I want to share, and then I'll be drawing with all of you. Um, so I'm Jet. Um, I use they, them pronouns, um, as well as he, him. Um, oops, skip the slide. This is me, um, me drawing all over the place. Um, I do a lot of different kinds of work. So some of sometimes I do humor pieces in the New Yorker. We also do autobiographical comics, memoir comics. I'm currently doing a visual column that's kind of part memoir, part film criticism called Trans Classic Movies on Into. So um, I think what ties it all together is I, you know, usually draw from my own life and my own past. Um, as someone who draws a lot about my own experiences, I feel like my memory is difficult to access at times. I feel like it's kind of like this knot that's difficult to unravel. Um, and I think that it feels like that because there's a lot of pressure to think about our stories in terms of these big moments. So, you know, losing someone or ceremonies or meeting special people, these kind of peaks and valleys. Um, but I'm, I'm very interested in the stories that kind of happen in, in between those big moments. I think there's a lot of interesting stories to tell that come from these and a lot of memories to kind of uncover that are just starting from very mundane things. Hey, Jet. Yeah. Can you pause for a moment? I'm getting a message that some people aren't seeing your screen. Oh, um, no. Can some people tell us in the chat if you're seeing the screen? Maybe it's just one person. Okay. Thanks, Tom. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Okay, everyone can see it. It's just, uh, yep, everyone can see it. I'll have to oh, tell. Okay, okay keep Okay, going. thanks. For, please feel free to interrupt me if anything's not coming through, because that would be terrible. Um, anyway, um, I feel like the memories that I like to dig up live in the specifics. So thinking about in my mind, traveling to a specific time in my life or specific place or thinking about objects from my past. You know, sometimes an ordinary object I remember like, you know, a phone or wheelbarrow can kind of unravel a whole story. Um, and I think that comics are kind of this special medium to tell stories about your past because they kind of let you annotate your past. Like you can kind of draw something, something you remember and say, this is how I felt about that. Or, you know, it seems like it was this way, but I actually felt this way. Um, I just love that kind of interplay between you know, your own thoughts potentially and kind of like what you remember. I also love comics for memoir stories because you can draw how things feel. It doesn't have to be realistic. So I just quickly did this one this morning of like a chair that felt really scary to me as a kid. Um, you know, it's not a realistic drawing, but you can like draw a face on a chair. I just love how comics give you that freedom to make things that are surreal happen on the page if you feel like it. So we're gonna kind of get into an exercise um, that kind of helps me unlock a lot of memory. Um, and I call it kind of stories through objects. So I think the important thing to remember here is that I'm gonna be walking you through a four panel structure and it's not important to, you might feel at times rushed or stuck. Whoa, excuse me. Um, sorry, something fell in my background. Um, you might at times feel rushed or stuck, but just keep going because this is all about practice. This is all about just letting the moment unfold as it does, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And if there's something you like about what you came up with in the time you know, here you can kind of expand on it later, but just don't erase, just keep going is my advice. And, you know, if it have to, I'll be drawing along with you and it won't be perfect, trust me. Um, 
So if you'd like right now, I know some people like to have a little time to set up panels. You don't have to do this, um, but I'll go ahead and, and do it with you. So basically what you need is four panels, but they don't, they don't have to be in a grid like this and they don't have to be perfect. And I'll just give you all a few minutes to set up your page if that's something you like to do. Jet, um, your your screen is frozen, I think, for us. Your your um your shared screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, are are you still on the shared screen? Or are you try, did you try and show us the panels? Oh, I have a I have a screen up on the panels. Can oh, you that's, it? No, we can't. Let's okay. see if we can. That's okay. Okay. It's not anything special. Just it's <laughs> um <laughs> just draw four squares and they don't have to be in any particular order. Um we're, we're still all seeing. Oh no, there you are. Oh, there. <laughs> here, here I am. Don't yeah, it's you know, can you see my screen now? Now we can, yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know why that's happening, but um I'll give you all a few minutes. Sorry about that. Jet, we didn't get to see your chair conic either. If you wanted to show it to us. Oh, no. OK. All right. Yes, I do. <laughs> I was just describing it. Yeah, so just to go back, this is kind of showing how you can kind of comment on the past. Here's the little chair it has a face on it. Okay. So I'll just give you all another minute. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm I'm going to pay attention to the chat so that I don't lose anything. Yeah, so if anyone missed what I had on that slide, it was complicate, comment upon, confess, and contradict. Yes. These are just ways I like to think about what you can do with words, but in a panel. Okay, so we have our panels. Maybe. Um, oops. Now um, I want you all just on a sheet of paper to list at least six objects from your past. And um, a way that I like to do this is kind of thinking about a place first and thinking about the objects that I see in that place. So a lot of times I think about the house that I grew up in, but it could really be anywhere of significance. And just don't overthink it, just list whatever objects come to mind. And I'll give you all a couple of minutes to do this. Not in the panels, sorry, just on a sep on a on a separate area, separate page. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> It could be from one particular time, or it could be kind of revisiting a space that you spent a lot of time in. So Nathan's asking, is it from one time? Or it could be, it could be many different times in the same space, like um, the school you went to as a kid. Good question.
Okay, I'll give you all a couple of more minutes to think of objects. Okay, give you all a little seconds to wrap up. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dice and I'm going to roll it. And I got a four. So that means if you want, you can choose the fourth thing off of your list. But you don't, if you don't like the fourth thing that comes up, you don't have to use it. This is just if you don't like to make decisions like me, it's easier to have a dice make the decision for you. Okay, I rolled number four. <laughs> Great. Okay. So now I'm just gonna, and don't worry, you don't have to memorize all these. And this is kind of a structure for how this four panel comic can go. Um, and I'm gonna be drawing along with you and writing these prompts in the chat. So don't worry. Um, in the first panel, you're going to draw and describe an object from your past, maybe the fourth one on your list. In the second panel, I want you to draw or write or both about something that happened involving this object. So it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be like my mom had a silver hairbrush that she always, you know, used every morning. Um, you know, it could be something that happened a lot or a particular instant incident. Um, and then panels three and four are kind of about reflection. So panel three being, how did you feel about this object at the time? And how do you feel now about it if you feel differently at all? Because um, I often think these memoir comics can be interesting to kind of put yourself in that mindset of the past. And then a good four panel has some kind of transformation at the end. So thinking about, did my feelings change about this object? Um, you know, like, you know, I had fun driving in my dad's car at the time, but now I look back on it and I feel like the way he drove was kind of dangerous, you know, <laughs> this is an example. Um, okay, so I'm gonna switch gears and draw along with you and I'll be giving you about five minutes for each panel. So this is this is quick and definitely some of you are gonna be like, that's not enough time. And that's why I say, just get the rough idea down and don't overthink it. Um, so I'll just write the prompt for panel one. move over here. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Hoping, hoping that you can. Yeah, it looks good. We can see panel one. Okay, great. All right. So number four on my list is my dad's scrunchie. So <laughs> this is what I'm going to be doing. But I'm I'm going to be kind of quiet during this time to give you guys space to kind of have your own thoughts. 
but please pipe up in the chat if you have any questions. Could we have the list again of what we're supposed to be doing in each box? Definitely. Um, I'll put that all ahead of time. So that. Okay, so all the prompts are in the chat, but I'll just say them out loud as I move from panel to panel. Okay, question from Linda, do we draw the last two or use words? Um, I think this is interesting because I don't wanna tell you, I don't wanna dictate how you use words and images, but I think that the final two panels might be easier to start with words and then draw a picture to match those words. Um, but you could obviously, you don't have to use words or images in either of them. What program am I using? Um, I'm using Procreate, which is um, not something I always use, but I use for this context. So I unfortunately picked a context that's very hard to draw, which is a car. <laughs> um, so you're gonna see my, my imperfection on display, which I hope will show you how things don't have to be perfect in the first round like this.
Okay, we have about 30 more seconds to kind of do this panel. Okay, I'm going to start going on panel two, which is something that happened involving this object. And again, it's important to just get the, the sketch, the kernel of the idea down. That's kind of how I view these exercises. Don't have to be perfect. Comics have to start somewhere, even if it's a rough somewhere. I love that I chose something that I find so difficult to draw because I can show you guys like you can't control what you draw all the time. Sometimes you just find yourself drawing a horse or a car. <laughs> Here I am erasing a little bit. Told you all not to erase, but I did. Yep, I'm fully going to erase right now. So. <laughs>
you all like 10 more seconds to finish this thought. All right, panel three. So this is the, the feelings and reflection time. And I, I will start with writing. Hey, Jet, sorry, I can't remember the instructions for panel three. Totally. Um, so the instructions for panel three, the question is, um, how did you feel at the object, about the object at the time? And just try to be as honest as you can, of like what you felt in that moment or kind of like why it stuck out to you as a memory. Okay, thanks. No problem. Someone's asking in the chat mm -hmm. if you have tips for when you have words but not an idea of what to draw. When you have words and not an idea of what to draw, you could you could honestly just draw the dot the object again from a different perspective. Um, like if you drew it really close up, you could draw it from further away, or you could even just draw a version of yourself in the past interacting with the object. You know, not not every visual has to be super action packed. But that's a great question.
Okay, about 30 seconds left on this panel. <laughs> oh, that's a great, yeah. I like using Procreate for sketching um, because you can kind of, you know, take it anywhere. Okay. And then we'll get started on the last panel, which is kind of how you feel now. And, you know, I think it's like interesting to think if your feelings have changed at all or if they've stayed the same, why?
Okay, we have about 30 seconds to wrap up. All right. So hopefully that everyone got some sketches of ideas down. Um, I think we're ready to, to share. Cool. Um, so I'll ask, and thanks, Jet. This, this was really fun, by the way. And I hope, I assume everyone else had fun. Um, so we'll ask you to find the little um, Zoom hand if you want to share, and we'll um, move through quite a few of you, I think. Uh, looks like we've got Mackenzie first and then Michelle. I'll keep a running list sort of going on in the chat um, and then Earl after that. So I think what I have to do is, there we go. There's Mackenzie. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so I did, um, my fourth one was window. Mm -hmm. And back at Canada, where my family would take vacations, there are these huge windows that um, yes. are in the sunroom. And then one time it was storming and an osprey landed in it, in the tree outside the window. And at the time I was just in awe of it and just that piece sitting there. And now I am nostalgic for it because I haven't gone in several years due to everything going on. Mm. I love the close up at the end. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you for letting me share. <laughs> well, we'll go to uh, Michelle next. Hang on, I'll replace. There we go. Hi. Thanks. Um, I it's kind of wordy. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can read it. Uh, my object was a violin. And when I was five, I got my first violin and started taking lessons with the father of the composer who wrote the music for the Muppets. <gasps> I was a good student and excelled for my age. I joined the orchestra in fourth grade, a full year before they allowed students to join. A couple of years later, my parents spent hundreds of dollars they didn't have on an expensive German violin for me. And I continued to play the violin for the next 15 years. At 15 or 16, I joined the Rhode Island Youth Symphony and began taking lessons with the ornery overbearing conductor. Uh, I hated going to orchestra rehearsals and didn't want to practice anymore as there was no pleasing him. That's my dad beaming and me scowling. But my dad got so much pride and pleasure out of it my, of my participation. Uh, I stopped playing when I went off to college. I tried taking fiddle lessons, but it never stuck. Now the violin is worth tens of thousands of dollars and it sits in its case untouched, but it would be the first thing I'd rescue in a fire. Wow. That's just, that's incredible what you've been able to do in the time. And I also think the way you set up the panels, like the first and the last taking up so much space really makes it this kind of complete piece. And also it's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it was great prompts. I really appreciate the episode, thanks. Okay, we'll go to Erla and um, Michelle real fast. Was that Joe Raposo's father? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Erla now. Oh, okay. I lost you, hang on. You're not spotlighted oh. yet. What happened to you? <laughs> um, I got it, I don't see you. Oh. Are you on your screen? Yeah. What happened to Erla? Yeah. Anybody? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there you That's are. Okay. I think you okay. lowered your hand and then you oh. disappeared. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. So um, I got a brand new um, 
uh, skipping rope and uh, family, not too much money, but it was brand new. So I loved it. It was hot pink, uh, sweaty, plasticky handles and um, of course, rubber. And I love skipping in our, um, we had a, um, this is in our front on the sidewalk and there was a ditch nearby. And I loved it because I was all alone. And um, I love being out on my own, leaving the family behind, braids flying, mm. the rhythm of the sounds and movement. No doubt there was singing involved, songs that I learned at school. And then um, I've I held on to that jump rope for a few years, got others, but I let go, I cut the cord and I picked up the ukulele instead. And now I'm still singing and jumping from song to song. That's Thank you. I, I <laughs> love the braids swinging, like all the, the, <laughs> the sensation. I just yeah. feel like I could see it all. So yeah. thanks. great. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we'll go to Jeannie next. I think I'm doing this in order, right? Yep. Oh, no, Michael is somewhere out here in Eventbrite land who cannot be Michael Ashner, I think. Is that who? And then Theo, and I'm getting a couple others. <laughs> I'm going to have to try to find Michael in I'm the... Here. Um, you see me? Um, sorry, without the hand. It's interesting that you don't get the hand on Eventbrite, so it takes me a second. Um. Sorry, there you are. We will. There you go, Michael. That's okay. I'm always doing a Where's Waldo when I'm when I'm hosting. Are this, you? This has a lot of words. I'll read this real quick. Mm. I swear to God. Um, number four, the 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 thing least interesting to draw was uh, the White Album by the Beatles. <laughs> uh, the White Album was the third or fourth album I ever bought. I was still figuring out the music I liked. Yeah. Um, there was no art on the cover, nothing to suggest it was called the White Album. You just had to know or find out from someone. Later, I learned that critics called it disjointed foreshadowing of the Beatles fracturing, but to my ear, it was a sonic masterpiece that took me on a mystical journey. Beautiful. Um, even the avant-garde sound collage, Revolution Number no. 9, astounded me. There was no Google or internet to look up what it meant back then, you were on your own to figure stuff out. And when John Lennon sang Julia, it was like listening to an angel whisper a song of melancholic yearning. Mm. Yeah, this kind of, uh, um, thank you, sorry. There's, there's, there's just one more. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm old, I hardly listen to music anymore, maybe when I'm driving or washing dishes, but I never listen to music as a main event, as a single point of focus. But then, and that album specifically, Music could crack my heart open and take me to unknown places. It's beautiful. Yeah, I I was going to say that um, this exercise works really well for music or movies or any kind of cultural object, too. And I feel like you, you've demonstrated that really well. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right, thanks. Jet, we have a full lineup. Can you stay a tiny bit late if we go a little long? Yeah, of course. I'm, okay. I'm here if you're here. Awesome. So we have Jeannie next. Hi, Jeannie. Um, there we go. Oh, you're oh. muted. Wait. Still can't hear Jeannie, can we? Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, good. All right. So number four was my sock horse when I was a little girl. I used to sleep with a sock horse. It was real hard to get it under the covers, you know? You had to kind of start it and shove it in. Anyway, that was number four. And I remember when I was little, I heard my parents fighting in their bedroom and so I got up and took my sock horse with me and uh, knocked on the door and said I had a nightmare and so I could get in and there's my mom and there's me and what did I say I said I felt strong riding my horse into their bedroom to save my mom and then the final one is, um, what do you, 
Um, what do you think about it now? And I'm so happy that my inner child had that horse to protect her. And honestly, what I remember when I was young was that I thought I could get on that horse and ride away if I needed to. Mm. Yay. Yeah. Sock horse. Who else had a sock horse? Probably no one. <laughs> it was pretty pathetic. I really <laughs> like how you see the horse's full face at the end and it's really sweet and oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah yes, that final panel is so lovely yeah he was a good horse <laughs> we'll go to ann next but we have to wait for ann to um show their screen in order for us to spotlight. start video ah there we go can you see Perfect. my here we go mm -hmm. let me get this uh let me get it in the right order when i was four the drugstore downtown and you have to understand it was one of these old-fashioned drugstores that had all the glass cabinets with stuff that sat in and on it before easter they had the most gorgeous yellow bunny rabbit for easter with a pink bow that i wanted so bad and that's basically i talk longer than that. that's backwards you can't i'm having to kind of read you the the thing there and that's what the first one is. That's the yellow one close to my curly head. And it really was that curly. And the other one next to it. And then when we went back the next week, the yellow bunny was gone. And the other one was still there. But the one I wanted so bad was gone. And I was so disappointed because I didn't even get to look at it anymore. And then, oh, this one, Easter morning, my mother gave me the bunny rabbit. Even though we couldn't really not afford it, the druggist was a friend and he had let her pay a quarter at a time when she had the quarter to pay and put that kind of like put that bunny on layaway for me because he was a friend and he wanted me to have it too. And in the end, I still have the bunny rabbit. He's in a little worse shape than he was, but it has always repre represented to me how much love and caring my mother gave to me and the friendship of the druggist. And I mean, he was our druggist until he died. Hmm. And there's my bunny. And the bunny's wrapped up with a bunch of other things like that from my childhood. Yeah, I love how the bunny evolves over the panels and the, you know, you can tell at the end that the bunny has been well loved. Yeah, you can tell there's no there's no ribbon anymore and he's just kind of bent ear and a little floppy and one of his little whiskers is gone. But anyway, so that was my story. Thank you. I, I'm just blown away by what everyone was able to do. You all are amazing. Okay, we'll go to Michelle next. That was so sweet. Mine isn't quite as sweet. <laughs> um, so mine's about the black and white TV that I got um, for my own bedroom. So here it is. It had an orange case it's from Radio Shack. And I got it in about fourth grade. And um, it was only black and white, but because I watched a lot of reruns that were in black and white, that was okay. And then I clarified that, like, that included Three's Company where like I already knew what the whole set looked like so it didn't matter I kind of colorized it myself so one time I noticed that as I turned it off it sort of shrunk and made this amazing starburst shape and then I was so fascinated by it I turned it on and off again for like a good half hour I couldn't stop turning it on and off and watching it shrink down to this tiny little dot and it felt like my own personal discovery like this beautiful starburst um, so I guess in this one, I kept talking about how I was fascinated mm. and, um, oh, and then like, it also just kind of felt magical and it felt, it made it feel more like mine. So now I'm a mama and, um, I have to remind myself that my children who like get bathed in this blue glow of their YouTube and video games may also love their YouTubers and their video game characters as much as I listen loved and then I listed a bunch of characters Lucy Ricky and <laughs> Jack and so on <laughs> yeah. yeah I love that it's a great 
it's a great story and like I also like all the colors that you used and the marker gives it kind of a special quality. So thank you. <laughs> we'll go to Lori next. Here we go. Okay. Um, I used to have a stuffed platypus when I was a kid. It was um, made of fur and it had glass eyes like those stuffed koalas that my friends used to have when we were kids. I think they were made in Australia. And um, one day I brought my stuffed koala to school and a group of boys stole them from me and was playing keep away and was like bashing it in the head and pretending like they were beating it up. And I was, horrified and really sad and they were laughing at me saying things like oh poor plata and then yeah so I was really attached to him and brokenhearted and stuff like that mm -hmm. but um over the years uh well he disappeared and I never knew what happened to him mm -hmm. so um but I kept his glass eye and two of his plastic feet that had fallen off and then those also disappeared. And I don't know what happened to them. That was the story. <laughs> yeah, I like to just let it sit that there's sometimes things fall out of our life and we don't remember why and just letting that be the truth of the story. And thank you for telling that, that was, that was really great. <laughs> I'm muted, we'll go to Helen next. I am. There we go. Um, so in 1961, my dad got stationed to, we got stationed to Frankfurt, Germany when the Berlin Wall went up. And we went from this like expansive farmland that we could play on to a city. And for some reason, my parents gave us each a scooter and it was this high quality steel sco scooter with these rubber wheels and a brake. And it was so cool. And so my brother and my sisters and I could, um, we went throughout the entire city of Frankfurt, Germany on these scooters, we had complete, so we had this freedom from being in the farmlands to freedom in a city. My parents didn't really watch us at all. And we just were everywhere we went together was on these scooters. And the way I, the way I felt about it um, is in order for us to, get on those scooters, we had to get out into the city and we'd never been in a city before. So I just have a wonderful thought about it, having this unfettered freedom from being in farmland to now in a city. And um, how do I feel about it now? I just, I think, how did my parents know that it was such a nice way of getting us over the loss of being home, our home to the city? Mm -hmm by giving us one freedom to another. And I just am really grateful. I would have never thought about that from that <laughs> perspective. So I'm really grateful for this um, exercise to, to appreciate my parents' wisdom in giving us this cool scooters. Thank you so much. That was, I, I'm glad that the prompt was helpful. And yeah, it was great, was thanks. Thank you. Okay, I'm going in order of the hands and I'll, I'll post um, the list again. It's a tiny bit out of order, but we'll go to Nathan next. There we go. Hey, um, so I did mine about a pair of shoes that I used to own. Um, so I had a pair of Keens sandals, which are sort of a, they have like a closed toe and sort of a weird strapping on top. Um, I wore them uh, when I went sailing on the San Francisco Bay. Um, they, they gave me this like really weird, awesome tan line because they had sort of a strange strap arrangement, but they smelled like truly terrible because I wore them when I was out like in, in salt water and the bay water and the ocean and stuff. Uh, they eventually died. So now they, they tread the sacred grounds of Shoe Hala with other dope shoes <laughs> of the past. 
And so I've labeled other shoes that were actually the other like one through six. All of my one through six were previous shoes. So these were candidates, but the Keens won. Wow. And I, I'm Sarah. Um, so I did um, this lamp uh, that was in the elementary school. I had to take speech classes. I don't remember how long I did this or how often it was, but I do remember that the lessons when we first started taking them were in the gym teacher's office. And it was like all athletic equipment and stuff. And this like ornate old fashioned red lamp with like beaded lampshade and it glowed really brightly red. And I was always like, what is that doing there? So the next panel is, I don't even remember who the teacher was. I remember the gym teacher cause I had him for like eight years but like I only did the speech class for maybe two or three years and I don't remember the teacher. I think we would like play like matching card games and like the lamp was always there. And then um, the third panel, um, I say that like, I didn't really understand the lamp and that it reminded me of um, Professor Marvel like in the Wizard of Oz, um, like something that would have been in his little caravan in the beginning of the movie because it was like old fashioned and kind of weird. Um, and when I think about it now, uh, the lamp is still really weird. <laughs> um, thank you both for sharing. Teachers sharing this weird office space. Why, who agreed to put that lamp in there? I don't know. Sometimes things are much weirder later on. <laughs> People are like, it won't be as weird later on, but not this lamp. Um, Nathan, thank, thank you for sharing you. smells in your comic. I love when people talk about how things smell in, in common. I mean, he truly smelled, so it, it's burned in my memory. I had to share. Okay, thank you both. Those were both great. Well, thank you. Thank you. We'll go to ND next. Um, I'll lower the hand. And then, there we go. All right, there we are. Hi. Hello. Um, didn't do too much with the prompt. I did a little bit. I started with the. Uh, I, I, my six items were a bunch of stuff and it just ended up being a bed mm -hmm. we had bunk beds so i, I did the, the bed and kind of a george harriman type thing mm -hmm. um but then I, I started thinking about the, the nightmares i used to have about the wolfman coming down the from the attic stairs and that's kind of where i i went with it so yeah that's beautiful it's very dreamlike mm -hmm. and like you can see that the object is kind of like transforming within this space. Where yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Of the stairs. Cool. All right. Um, we'll go to Tim next. Here we go. You might have to unmute yourself, Tim. I'm unmuted. There we go. Can you hear me? Yep. Wow. Um, I had a paper route, so one of the, my number four was newspaper, so here's my stack of newspapers uh, rolling at uh, 4.30 a.m. in the morning, mm. and I got on my bicycle and threw the papers. <laughs> after I threw the papers, uh, I would take a nap. But I'd, I'd sleep on the floor so I wouldn't get too deep in a sleep. I wake up in time for school and breakfast and stuff. So how I think about it today, I, to me, it was a good experience. You know, it was tough, but taught me a lot of stuff about discipline and staying with it. And I loved riding my bicycle. Thank you so much. I, I like, I feel like I got the whole experience and I like the big clock in panel three to show that was really. Yeah, that, that really kind hurt. of, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to draw that. It just kind of popped in my head that there was a, a grandfather clock. I don't think it was on the wall, but it was somewhere in the house and I couldn't remember where, so I just put it on the wall. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about drawing. Is sometimes you start and things just kind of open up and you're like, yeah. oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> this is a great exercise. Thank you. Great. We'll move on to Kathy. Um, there we go. 
and you need to unmute as well, Kathy. Thank you. Um, well, number four, I went with the dice and I held myself to it. Um, but number four was my mom's ashes. So spoiler alert. Um, so uh, my mom's ashes, uh, we, she was, I have to do it this way so I can read it. She was cremated for $800. We got her back in a plastic bag in a plastic container. She didn't want us spending money. My sister took mom home and placed her on her piano to keep until we put her ashes in the ocean. We all started to call the box mom. Mm -hmm. I didn't think, so then this is, you know, uh, whichever box three was, I didn't think I wanted the ashes, but a week before we were to give the ashes to the ocean, I called my sister and asked if I could have mom for the week. I brought mom home and curled up with her on the couch and I cried and I cried. It felt like I was holding her again, like I did when she died. I had lain for her for, with her for an hour um, after her spirit passed and she ascended with love. And then I wish, this is how I feel now, I wish I had kept some of the ashes, maybe all of them. Instead, we divided the ashes into plastic beach bales uh, some of them spilled and we took them to the ocean at dawn. Note, this is illegal. <laughs> we did not know this at the time. So now when I miss my mom, I crawl into bed or onto the couch with her and hold her, uh, in, uh, I crawl into the couch with her uh, old nightgown. Mm. I don't think I ever would have written that thank you this is a, a beautiful story and I feel really lucky that you shared it with us and I yeah I beautifully written wonderful thanks uh, we'll go to Jared next here we go please all right let me see so I did mine on my iPad so I'll have to do a screen share oh uh can I screen share uh, we have to give you that permission. Give me a second. Um, okay, you should be able to now. All right, oh, let me go full screen. All right, is everyone seeing this? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, uh, yeah, mine is very simple. Uh, basically, there was a, a, when I was younger, there was a grinder in my dad's garage. And I used to spin it. And so one time doing that, I got my finger stuck. And it wasn't, it didn't hurt too much. It just kind of pinched, but I was really embarrassed by it. And then I just ended with, I, I don't actually have a grinder in my garage now that I'm an adult. Um, so yeah, I, right. It was just kind of just a random like number four object, right? And I actually wasn't expecting anything to come out of it, but I was like, oh yeah, like it, it really, it's about hurt not the physical hurt, but kind of like the emotional hurt of being embarrassed by doing something you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of love those things where like the fear you had around something kind of overtakes what actually happened. And I think this is a great story about that, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> where like the worst thing didn't happen, but it actually was bad in this other way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll go to um, Audrey next, and then um, there we go. I'll post in the chat. Hi. So this was kind of a, I wrote all these objects down, and then the one that I picked was the heat register. Yes, a heat register. So we had one of those heat registers under a cabinet in our living room that had one of those plastic covers over it to um, direct the heat out. I was by near the front door. And so what I would do is I would lie in front of it to get the heat. So I used to lie in front of the heat register to feel the warmth on my face, especially in the winter time. And I was reading the paper. 
I felt warm and cozy. My parents would be in the living room and they'd be reading the paper or talking. So how do I feel about it now? Hmm. How do I feel about a heat register that was in my house growing up 50 years ago? I don't feel anything for the object, but the memories, the memories it brings up from the house is special. So many memories. Mm -hmm. And then I just wrote down some of the, the, some of the memories. Yeah, I love that. I, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. So we'll go to Tenley next. Um, the plate. There we go. Okay. You mute. Hi. So um, I am Nathan's mother, and I can attest to the stench of those shoes. <laughs> um, I did about a hat I had when I was little. Um, I had a pink knitted hat with braids on it. And since I was obsessed with the Wizard of Oz, I called it the Dorothy hat. Um, I remember wearing it while watching my father shave and sitting on the toilet. Um, I loved the hat. Um, and when I wore it, I felt like I was transported to the wonderful land of Oz. Mm. Um, when I think about it now, what I remember most is how special and safe my dad made me feel. And I miss that. I love that. I love the scene of you sitting on the toilet while your dad is shaving. That's just, it's, it seems so realistic to me. And oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a great story. <laughs> great. Thank you. Oh, and we'll go to Theo next. Hi, Theo. Please. There we go. Hello. Uh, I drew my old bathtub mm. so at my old house. I had like a pink bathtub. The whole bathroom was pink, and I just thought that was the most wonderful thing in the world. And, um, my mom would sit on the toilet while I took baths and would read to me. Mm. And one day I asked her if the tooth fairy was real, and she said, "Of course." And I started crying because I knew she was lying and I felt very small in that moment and recently uh, we were going back to rent the apartment and I went into the bathroom and I stepped in the bathtub and it just felt so I felt so big and I'd grown so much and it was such a small place and it was weird <laughs> <laughs> that's I, I love that that's beautifully done and the colors are so striking I love the, the pink tub really is standing out and sparkling and it reminds me of I had a purple tub when I was a kid that I thought was really special. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks, Theo. And for everybody who doesn't know, Theo did our New Year's card this year. So if you've seen it, that came from Theo. Thank you. I think we're going to Michael next. Hi, my number four was my rocking chair. Oops, my iPad went off. Sorry. Here, uh, my number four. Oh wait, no. <laughs> iPad. Uh, maybe you could take somebody else. Oh here. My number four was my rocking chair. Um, mm. uh, so when I went away to college, mom and dad gave me a rocking chair that I put in my dorm room. Then uh, later when I got older and had my own office, I brought my rocking chair along. Now it's in my bedroom and I just use it as an impromptu shelf that I put old clothes on. So these days I sit on a high-tech Aeron chair that I bought at a discount, but I think fondly of my old rocker. Yes, I, I love the rocker and how it's kind of like almost organic like it's kind of moving in different positions <laughs> wonderful thanks great we'll go to janice next and if i'm missing anybody i'll, I'll find him in the list in a second here we go hi anyway my four is very short uh, when i was a kid i had two dogs i loved them and got along with them and one day my sister came home with five poodle puppies. I don't know where she got them, 
but she came home with them and we had them for a while. But we had to, you know, find them homes. So we kept one of them and she was a big standard poodle. And she was so big and smart and she taught the other dogs that I had how to open the door and get out. And I don't know really why we had to get rid of her, but we found her a, another home. And I was really sad about that at the time. And many dogs have come and gone and I still don't have pets anymore. And I was really never able to bond with an animal again after that. But you know, when I do my sketches, I always make sure that I put a dog in it. Mm. I, I love this. And I, all the dogs are just so full of character. Like they can be <laughs> their own you know, character in a story. <laughs> Thank anyway. you. That's my story. Thanks. Great. We're looking for Jenna Beth and then Margaret, both who are on Eventbrite. So let me give me a second to. I'm Jenna Beth. I'll say something so you can find me. Oh, yeah. Hang on a second. Do that again. Hello. Hello. Jenna Beth. Oh. I'm Jenna Beth. It's not working. <laughs> Why is it not working? Um, uh, oh, there you are. I can spotlight you now. There we go. Great. Cool. Um, okay, let's see. So my fourth item was my first computer. Oh, this is tricky, guys. How do you share? <laughs> okay. Because uh, I don't remember what I wrote. My middle school through freshman year of college computer. It had two gigabytes of hard disk space, which I think back on now very fondly. And then, oh, oh sorry. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm in tight quarters. <laughs> the second drawing was actually of just the keyboard. Um, hmm. I colored, I painted all the keys. I like painstakingly popped each key off and painted just the outside edge and it was beautiful. Um, hmm. But this computer, I did my homework, I played games. My favorite was Roller Coaster Tycoon. AOL IM was a new thing in the 90s and that just like blew up my world. Um, <laughs> But the painting the keyboard was particularly me, something I would do for it. I would always decorate everything. So uh, I, I don't, I guess it's backwards. That's why I'm struggling. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my keyboard was so unique and beautiful and it was very me and I had this little world. I loved that computer so much. It was, you know, a desktop and really heavy, but the thing that surprised me was now I have this sleek MacBook and I don't love it. Like I used to love that other computer. Hmm. It's light. It's super powerful. I can use it for so much more, but like my heart's a little broken around this actually. Like, hmm. I don't know what happened. I used to love computers and now I just kind of hate them to be honest. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I thank you so much. This is I really relate to this. I feel like we must be in a similar uh, generation because I yeah. remember having a desktop like that. And I, I, I love how you, you use, you actually use color on the keyboard in the comic. To, so it really stands out like your personal touch that you did at the time and in the comic. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Great. We'll go to Margaret next. How are you, Margaret? Yeah. Are you? Okay. What do I do? <laughs> Show us your panels. It's, it has a little sign. Okay. Can you see this? Yeah. Well, it, it, kind of. yeah, if you hold it still. Uh, later. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. So when my grandparents' house, there was a big Mexican plate in the kitchen and um, it was broken, but glued back together. And as a kid, I just studied the crack all the time. I studied the image. It was a sleeping guy in a sombrero. Um, it was supposed to cover a crack in this, it was sort of a walled up chimney 
So you didn't have a fireplace anymore and this covered the crack. And I always thought it was really menacing because the sombrero hid the guy's face. And I remember thinking that was just sort of sinister. And it reminded me of the Dutch cleanser bottle. And I don't know whether anybody remembers that, but you couldn't see the lady's face. It was hidden by a bonnet and that kind of, I found that menacing and I kind of still do. And it still bothered me that the plate covered the crack. And when we were little, we were told that was where Santa Claus and his sleigh would have to come through the crack mm. to get in and bring his presents. And it's like, how does he do that? He'd have to be so tiny and the sleigh so tiny. And why is the plate in the way? You know, the plate was in the way for Santa. So, and Tom knows, I still think it's interesting that you can seal a face like with a big hat or it, it sort of leads it to mystery and unknown. So I don't know, I guess the whole thing bothers me a little or, or I, maybe I just learned from it, so. Yeah, could I, could I see the last panel? It was moving around a little bit. Yeah, sorry. Make sure everyone can see what you did. That's the plate over the crack. Okay, gotcha. This is the Dutch cleanser lady. I think I did another one. I mean, she was, I don't know if anybody's seen this. She had a, she was striding off with a bucket and a broom and she, you couldn't see her face. There was this big bonnet mm. and it was just sort of, um, sort of scary. You know, mm. that's the kind of thing a, a little kid looks at it gets scared, so. Yeah, I love this story. And yeah, I do think there's just certain objects that seem really menacing when you're a kid. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I was scared of the vacuum, you know? <laughs> yeah, I have a, a face and a neck and a, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, thanks, Margaret. And I posted in, in the chat a, a link to the Dutch cleanser image if y'all need to see that. Oh, great, oh, great. I wonder if it's still that way. Thanks, Tom. Sure. There we go, Kendra. <clears throat> Okay, I can't really actually, I'm kind of small. I don't have, I'm not in gallery view. So, or I'm in gallery view, but I'm just gonna try. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> whoops. <laughs> torturing everyone. Um, okay, so I did, a, um, I did a kaleidoscope that I had. Mm. I wanted a bug kaleidoscope for Christmas. I was 17 and I wanted this kaleidoscope. And I actually, I was so worried that I might not get this kaleidoscope that I had a big temper tantrum in front of my sister about it. And she was like, dude, we got you that kaleidoscope. Just shut up. It's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I somehow I just felt like I would, I couldn't live without that kaleidoscope. Mm. And um, and I don't know where my kaleidoscope is anymore. I don't know where it is right now, but there there is one on eBay for forty dollars. <laughs> and while I was drawing these, while I was drawing myself both in the temper tantrum picture and in the the looking at on eBay picture, um, well, I had a bunch of arms because I was like freaking out, and then I had a bunch of arms because I drew my arms really badly. <laughs> I kept trying to redraw them, but. Um, but I just feel like I look like a bug. And I thought that that kind of made sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I honestly think that's my favorite panel with you, all the arms. And sometimes what we think of as mistakes can add, like, I don't believe in mistakes. It can add a lot of character, you know, and, and uniqueness or drawing. So thank you. That was, that was a great story. <laughs> awesome. I think we're going to Mark next and then Uni after that. Here we go. All right, hi everybody. All right, so can can y'all see? I have this, uh, it's kind of flickering in and out with the background. Right oh gosh! You have to take off your filter. Oh. Although that's a pretty cool zoom background, so. <laughs> Oh gosh, all right, I, I can't even find, find myself to take my background off. Uh, wow. 
All right, well, I'll, I'll just tell you. Um, maybe that will. At least it... Fish, try like holding it against your your person, like as much, I think. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. So the the first panel is a pair of headphones. Uh, when I was a kid, I found at the school fair this this like oh gosh this big pair of headphones and, and they were like big and bulky and they they like were way too big for me but I I, I loved them uh because I, I shared a room with my my brother my older brother and he basically like dictated what we would listen to and so this was my my chance to be able to listen to music of my own and so uh the rest of the panel is just uh, this this panel is me on my bed listening to my headphones mm -hmm. and then this last panel is uh, like me crying uh thinking about those headphones and like how i'm empowered i felt uh when i first brought them home and was able to listen to my own music yeah i I, wa I wasn't fully able to see all of the panels and I hope that you share it online so everyone can see it fully, but I, I like, I really like the story you were telling and, you know, thank you for sharing. Cool. Thank you for the prompts. <laughs> and as a reminder, if you share um, on social media, hashtag Friday night comics, you can do at comics workshop and I don't know if Jet's on Instagram, you are right? No, oh, I am. Um, I'm Jet Draws, so um i'll just put that up there awesome and here we go with umi hey um thank you for the prompt i really like your um uh, your drawings well not drawings but comics on instagram jet uh oh, this you. is this is what i did this is called blanket my fourth uh material was a blanket that i used and so this is the first panel do you see so mm. this is the blanket and the next panel i started when I, it started when i was two i started masturbating with it only digitally and with some exclusive um corners and stitches so i didn't do anything like vaginal or anything but i just like kind of like run my fingers like this it just felt really good like all i used like all my hands to arm only these parts touched them so well anyways i didn't want to go into and after two years uh, my grandfather decided to get rid of it. I didn't protest it because I only missed those uh, corners, particular corners and stitches. And until my mom got me another blanket, I came up with another method of stimulating my fingers. So mm -hmm. make a tight fist and slowly release it, untie it. And it should take about 10 minutes. You should try it too, like hold it and try take take 10 minutes to release it and it will really feel good uh so that's that's what it is sorry like i didn't use any other objects but i really enjoyed it no i i beautiful it's like it looks gorgeous and like i like you know mm. it's just like very creative panels and i love the story as well so thank you cool we're gonna go to fiona um Let's see when Fiona comes on screen. Thank you so much, Yumi. Thank you. Oh, um, here I had to remove the sticker. Lol. <laughs> hi, sorry, I've never used Zoom before. Um, hi. Okay, so um, here I need to face it like that so it'd be easier to like show this. Um, so um, like, um, I guess like quickly here's like um a bit, just like a bit of a trigger warning um this has a lot to do with like alcoholism and stuff so um just if, if that's something you're uncomfortable with you know just meet me um or you know whatever um anyway yeah um um gosh oh wow I've I'm so bad at this um that works so, yeah. um here's like the first panel um or basically, like, as a kid, um, I did recycles a lot and stuff. And something that I saw in recycles all the time was, like, skull vodka. Um, like, all the time, skull vodka. And, um, okay, yeah. Here's, like, the second panel. Um, another time where I would see skull vodka a lot was um, 
like I would um have to wake my dad up to um get him to drive me to school and stuff and there would usually like be like a bottle by his side and stuff um yeah um um obviously at the time I didn't really like know what like vodka or like drinking or alcoholism was um and he was just kind of like that 24 7 so I didn't really even I wasn't really um able to comprehend that he was different in any way um so yeah there's him like like partying lol at like 2 a.m um and um yeah um um okay there's a little like piddle now you know now it's like an adult like I'm able to kind of like recognize what he's been doing and stuff and um oh no it's um mostly my emotions towards there just kind of like I'm sad it's it's sad and it's kind of hard to comprehend it and it's really important and good to kind of reevaluate your emotions as just like a little girl dealing with this and not knowing what to do and um yeah <laughs> um so yeah it's it's basically a, it's very sketchy because I had a lot to write so yeah, yeah. yeah. thank y'all <laughs> that was that was great Fiona and you know I relate to a lot of that and you know I understand that this exercise can really bring up some intense emotions you know so thank you all for kind of sharing who shared because I know it's it's not easy to share it's not easy to share in general but thank you <laughs> and thank you for allowing this experience to happen yeah right. <laughs> couple more jet this is Ranjita if um let's see if Ranjita can go to video there we go hi I, I didn't expect my name to come up <laughs> oh and your audio ah there we go yeah so this, uh, this is a little tiny memory of my childhood where I loved uh, sitting uh, at the window. I'm the only child, so I, I, I never liked going out with my parents. I would love to sit uh, at the window and look the, at the world outside and say hi to anyone that passed by. Even if it's a cow, I would say, hello, cow. So, <laughs> so I really enjoyed doing that. However, very recently, my mom used to say that people thought I was a very lonely kid and I was, it was so sad. So they, from, the, from their point of view, it was a very pitiful situation. But for me, it was one of the most happiest time because I enjoyed my time. Even now when I think, I'm like, oh, wow, I used to have so much fun making up stories about all the people that I was passing by. <laughs> so that's my childhood memory. And window is my object. Yeah, I love how you um, flip the perspective. Like, first we get <laughs> back to the bars and then we see your like legs through the bars and then in the, the way your body is very like playful and like, you know, but, and I also relate to the story because I was definitely a people watcher as a kid and sometimes <laughs> people thought that was weird. So <laughs> anyway, thank you. Yeah. Thank, well, you thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Deborah next. There we go. Uh, did you say me? Oh hi, hi everybody! Um, wow, I am I am so uh, uh, I'm so impressed by what everybody did. Um, so this is is that visible? Uh, I can't really see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I love what Nathan did with the shoe. I, I I aspire to that. But this is one of those weird shoes with a rocker bottom that ages ago. That's how they did orthotics. So the orthopedist's orthotist presented my new shoes. Um, I resisted wearing them for a while. When I finally did, two things happened. <clears throat> uh, every step, I'm reading backwards. Suddenly every step was a wobble and kids uh, ridiculed me mercilessly. Um, until then, I didn't hate my feet. They were odd, but they served me well. Now I had deformed feet. It didn't help that I heard the orthopedist or the doctor tell my mother, they should have broken both her feet when she was born. 
No, orthopedic. Deborah, you need to lift that a little higher. Uh, oh, so is that, are you seeing panel three now? I didn't number them. And so this is four? A little oh, higher. I see, I see. So that's panel four. Uh, orthotics have improved some. For one thing, they go inside shoes. And uh, my feet still odd, cavus, high arched, troublesome. Uh, I can't read that. And totally addicted to orthotics. <clears throat> That's it. Awesome. Yeah, that that shoe is just. Can you hold up that shoe drawing? <laughs> It's incredible. Um, it's not. It, it it's not as bad as it was. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to to get the the full horror of those shoes. But anyway, thanks. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. Thank Good you. Question. Thank you for yeah. sharing. It was great. Thank you. We'll go to Darlene next. Hi, Darlene. Hi. There we go. Um, my grandmother had a tube of red lipstick in a metal base and a can of Aquanet hairspray on the corner of the sink. Um, my sister and I saw an ice tray also on the sink full of cigarette butts. The ends were stained with her red lipstick. We smoked the butts in the bathroom and sprayed Aquanet hairspray to get rid of the smell. We thought we were like actresses with red lipstick and our hair teased up into big poof balls, smoking cigarette butts, spraying our hair like that. And then grandma yells, I know what you two are doing in there. And today, I wonder what in the hell was I thinking sucking on someone else's cigarette butts and using another's lipstick. Yuck, I can't stand the smell of cigarette smoke or hairspray as an adult, no way. <laughs> that's great and yeah. I just love all the expressions <laughs> that you have it really kind of like demonstrates that scene <laughs> um, thank you <laughs> I'm muted last well but not least we'll go to Jamie we'll need Jamie to go to video Hold on, here I go. And you, you know, I'm terrible at this. All right. And I know, I guess I'm supposed to not have the stamp on my face during the drawing. I just realized that's probably rude. So maybe next time I'll try not to do that. But for now, hold on. Now I got to do a start video. Okay. Wait, yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. So I can't see myself. I like to, I'm going to hide behind the paper. Um, so the, my, ob, that's number one is my object is, uh, it was this concrete skull thing that, um, uh, I got it the Disney World. It was like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, right? So at the end, there was a gift shop. And somehow my brother ended, my little brother is four years younger than me, ended up with this concrete skull. It glowed in the dark. It was like the coolest thing. And I ended up with these gold doubloons that were like plastic pieces of shit. So I somehow tricked him into like trading me the gold doubloons for the skull. Somehow it was like a sight unseen thing. I don't know. And normally me and my brother get along so great and I'm not like a wicked person, but this was like one moment of wickedness where I think he was getting more ice cream and more attention because he was younger and it was just a moment of victory. So here is me trading the doubloons for him and he's like, oh, I'm going to get something awesome. And I'm like, haha, you don't even know because I'm getting the awesome thing. And so then panel, I think that's three. That's him sad and me holding it. And so I felt good because I won. And now I still feel good because it lives on my shelf near my lava lamps. And it says, I love it because somehow it made it through college, 31 moves, achievements, disappointments, births, deaths, and it still glows in the dark. So there you go. All right, the end. Thank you. Great, great way to go out. I mean, like everyone said, the panels are amazing. And thanks. Well, I did, I have to admit, I cheated a little bit because I always come late. So I ordered this book that has blank shit. And then I thought, oh, but I still drew it myself. But I took oh, yeah. that, like, the oh, circle yeah. idea. I can't take credit for it. It's from the seven-year-old kid book. But, you know. Well, I you know, it. we all, like, have to, like, no one is born knowing how to make panels. So yeah. we're all, like, all right. picking up 
panel structures from what we look at. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everything. <laughs> cool. Jet, you really stirred up a lot. I think people really <laughs> wanted to share. It's just terrific. Yeah, I can't believe like I'm I'm so blown away that all of you are still here and I everyone just made such amazing work. I yeah. anyway, thank you. <laughs> Special. We like to we like to everybody unmute and clap and thank our artists for being here. So maybe we can all do that and say thank you, Jet. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really nicely done. Thank you. So generous. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah. So where's the best place to post it? <laughs> nice. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> There's a bunch happening on Instagram. Yeah. Cool. That was Jim. Thanks, Where everybody. We're going to end this now. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you so you much. So. Thank you. Thank you.